Hello guys! Welcome back to my YT channel. This is again your YouTube content creator, Sotero. So our talk for today, I will give you samples, examples of electronic configuration. Okay, so at this point in time, I'll be able to teach you the electronic configuration of certain elements. Then we are able to show to you also the electronic configuration by means of orbital diagram and also by noble gas notation okay this noble gas notation and i don't really understand this when i was in college i mean it's not really full okay even though i am already a licensed chemical engineer i have also a little bit doubt with this particular topic of uh, you know this notation of noble gases because our teachers uh, before always focus in the plane electronic configuration, not on the other variations of uh, teaching, that there's a lot of expansion with this particular topic, okay? And then the orbital diagram, it's also uh, taught, but, you know, maybe I am sleeping, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because, uh, or it could have been the, the style of the teacher, but, I could not remember now, okay? But what I really learned is the natural electronic configuration only not the other variations. I, because I could not remember if it is being taught or not. Things like that. So during my review, after my fifth year college, that's the time I really, oh my gosh, there's a lot to explore with these particular topics. And then when I reviewed in the University of San Carlos, Talamban, Okay, I took my review for one year because I don't want to dive in the sea. Maybe I will not pass, things like that, okay? So, it's in there. Oh, there's a lot pala siya. Variations in this topic, electronic configuration. Okay, things like that. And it's so enjoyable, but it's not discussed uh, comprehensively. It's discussed properly, but it's not discussed comprehensively. How can we understand this thing so okay meaning it's it's being taught in a very good manner things like that but it's not taught in a very detailed coverage things like that because they reach their lesson plan like that oh up to here only up to here only but there are also some topics that are not listed there and then came out in the board examination things like that because the point it's only coming during the review, okay? Because there's so many topics, I think so. It cannot be accommodated all. I think they're just focusing on the most important, I think, okay? Things like that in, the, in fairness of the instructors, right? Things like that. So that's why it's really you that matters a lot, okay? So if you are just resourceful, uh, you have your own initiative, patience like that i'm very attentive in the class hard working like that then you can really learn a lot outside from your classroom instruction meaning you will go to the library you borrow books like that but if, if you are a scholar then buy books from your book allowance right so most or majority of the academic scholars or the presidential scholars have Sorry, free book allowance. Like it's up to you if you will buy or not. But in my case, before I will not buy the books, I will just go to the library and borrow so that I can save the money in the projects to buy handouts, pamphlets like that. Okay, I can do another thing. I can spend another, you know, valuable things. Okay, I know books are valuable, but you know, there's an alternative then why should I buy? There's an alternative for that. Okay, things like that. Because we are not really uh, belong to the rich family. We are in the poverty level. So, it's struggling financially. Then, I can save that money. Things like that. Okay, for another thing. To, to be bought. To want to be bought. Okay, get the point. So, it's going to be like that. So, electronic configuration. Okay, like that. So I remember that my allowance in my, I think in my fourth year, I really got it from that Commission on Higher Education because the one who will pay our scholarships are the CH, uh, Higher Commission on Education, the chair. Then 
I bought it with two pants, okay, and I'm very, very happy, and also bought one for my brother. Imagine me, I bought with my own allowance. That means the, the salary of my father would not be enough for that. You get the point? Things like that. So how much, how much more you will buy the books? You get the point? Things like that. Okay, let me go back to electronic configuration, right? Okay, so like that. Okay, so very popular today are the electronics industry, but electronics industry are governed with a study of electrons. That's why electronics, okay, uh, semiconductors industry, and I've always studied electronic configuration because it has to do something with the physical and chemical properties of each element, how useful and adaptive to produce the desired products in which we will use that every day of our lives here in this contemporary world, right? Okay, I will be able to give you some examples for this. Okay, I really researched the examples because I cannot memorize everything. I don't have the periodic table in my hand also. Okay, number one. We have aluminum, okay? Aluminum is very important nowadays, especially for different products, okay? In order to preserve the taste, the, the smell, or whatever, okay? There's a lot of use for this aluminum, particularly in the cans, containers, or whatever, okay? At that point, I don't, we don't have to be detailed <laughs> so for that. So aluminum 13, okay? Then we have 27. If you can see like this in your future examination, then if you're a student right now, taking up chemistry, or if you're a student right now, uh, you have your master's in teaching chemistry, right? You are in education, but you're majoring chemistry, specifically teaching only science, chemistry, things like that. So this is very important, okay? Things like that, okay. Now we have here the 13, here will be our atomic number. Okay, we need to remember this all the time. Okay, here are our mass number. Here, okay. Mass number. Okay, because there's no unit. If that is a uh, atomic mass, then it has gram per atom. Okay, but it has no unit. That's why it is a number only. So mass number. Okay, so if you mean number, do not put unit. For example, I will say, what is the mass of electrons? So there must be kilogram, gram. So I'm not saying what is the mass number of electrons. So this is a very minor thing first before we go to the you know the details of the discussion. So, so mass number, okay, atomic mass like that, okay. So, if you say number, it has no unit. It's simply a number. Okay. Things, a digit, a number, uh, a numerical figure, things like that. You get the point. So, atomic number obviously is only a number, right? Mass number obviously also is number. Okay. Things like that. Now, atomic number will represent your number of electrons. Okay. And with represents also at the same time your number of protons. Okay, that's the point. They are equal. Uh, they are equal numerically, but they are not equal in magnitude. What do you mean by this? Because electrons negative and protons positive. For example, if I have 13, 13 is the number of electrons will be negative 13 and the number of protons will be 13 actually but during your electronic configuration or let's say any chemical reaction or whatever oxidation number topic we we are not really concerned with the negative sign that, that's why we will drop the negative of the electrons we mean only that aluminum have 13 electrons okay because when we count for something we don't deal with negativities or negative. You get the point. One, two, three, four, five. Well, there are six books inside my room. You will say negative one, negative two, negative three. So it's it's not really existent to, to say in that way. You are only particular for the quantities, not for the sign or the magnitude. 
That's why we mean <laughs> directly that the number of electrons and protons are the same. That's what it means by quantities, but not in magnitude. Because we're not in sign. This is sign, right? Negative like that. Because we say, an atom of an aluminum. One atom of an aluminum. Okay? We mean of aluminum that contains one atom. Okay? In a periodic table, you have 118 elements. So there are also 118 atoms. So each has one atom. Okay, and each atom have electrons, protons, like that, blah, blah, blah. So when you mean of an element, so element is composed of one or single atom fixed together. Things like that. You get the point? So in that atom, there's nucleus. So inside the nucleus, there's protons and neutrons. And outside the nucleus, there are the outermost shells or the shells or the energy levels in which these electrons occupied. You get the point, things like that. Okay. So, that's what it means. So, if, if you mean of atom, so meaning to say, it is really a neutral. Okay, neutral. Meaning to say, there's no charge. There's no ion. Okay, things like that. The reflection of elements in the periodic table are neutral. It's not based on the charge. It will only be based in charge if it depends on the topic we are trying to deal with. For example, if we are dealing, dealing with ionic equations or chemical reactions, that's the time we will use the charges. Okay? But if we are not dealing with a particular topic, then by looking as, uh, as themselves, <laughs> originally that's neutral compound, or no, neutral elements. Okay, neutral elements. Okay, meaning to say with zero neutron. Things like that, that's why neutral, right? So you don't have a charge. I say aluminum, there's no charge. Okay, then it can only have a charge when it will dissociate or ionize into a solution, or if you will try to react that with another uh, chemical reactions. So, like that, but originally, as an aluminum, there's no charge in it. It depends on what topics you are dealing with in chemistry. We get the point, so that's the time you will use the oxidation number, the charge, but originally as an aluminum, nothing. That means zero neutron or neutral. Okay, and has electrons and protons in it. Ganon. Okay, you get the point. So, I may justify that here that the neutron is zero. Why? Because when you add the protons and electrons, it will become zero. Oh, proton positive 13, negative 13 electrons. 13 minus 13 is equal to 0. So we need to say, in your one single atom of element, you have also a neutron of 0. So that means aluminum is neutral in its permanent and stable state as a single aluminum. Meaning you don't touch, you don't use it like that only. You get the point? Then looking, we're simply looking. You get the point? So if it depends on the topics already, if you go to the redox, the expression of the concentration puppy, colligative properties, there's a lot, right? Chemical equilibrium, electrical trans uh, nuclear transmutation topic, like that, the gases topic, the solubility, whatever. There's a lot of topics in chemistry, okay? So that's the time it will be used your charges. Okay, you get the point, Anna Shah. Okay, now, in electronic configuration, we are focusing to the number of electrons, so we drop the negative sign. Okay, because this is the first thing to discuss, because maybe our students will be wondering why. Why, you are, why it is not negative, since we are dealing with electrons, right? And you proceed directly to our discussion, like this, and the students are wondering why it's negative. Supposedly, it's also negative, uh, and we drop off the negative, because this is the reason. Okay, you get the point. So our electrons here, we drop off the sign because we are not concentrated with the sign. Okay, in here. You get the, that's the same also with the Lewis dot structure and Lewis diagram. We are not concentrated also with the sign of the electrons. You get the point? Even though that is a negative charge. Okay, come on. Okay, and now we understand. Okay, alone and long, so 13 shall not. Okay, in our electronic configuration, Okay, 
So in our electronic configuration, so we are focusing on the number of electrons. So we must have a total of 13 electrons in our configuration of aluminum. Okay. Now, we should remember the of ball principle for this, huh? electron spinning. We must start with the lowest atomic orbital energy to the highest energy atomic orbital, things like that. Okay. For example, okay, things like that. So, on atom use the electron configuration, we'll be dealing with the uh, poly explosion principle. Okay. So these are the theory, all expression principle. We have the hands rule. Okay. We have the off bow rule. Okay, like that. Okay. These three rules will be applied somewhere along the way. You get the point. So I discussed this already yesterday. Oh, what is a poly expression principle? Hands rule and off bow rule. So we need to go back. Right? So, now we write our electronic configuration for this. Okay, things like that. Okay, now we have our off-bow rule, like for example, a, a diagram like this. 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, uh, let's say 2s, okay, 3s, 4s, ganon. Okay, three, okay, so S, P, D, F, so S, P, D, F. So before learning the electronic configuration, you must uh, study first the quantum numbers topic, so that you can understand. I already discussed also yesterday, right? So S, S, so all will be S here, okay, P, all will be P here, so P, 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 and then three, four, so D. So D, D, and F, 4, F. So like that. Okay. So, first column, all S, subshell. Second column will be all P. Third column will be D. And fourth column will be F. Now starting from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 4, F. Okay, things like that. And it forms a triangle. Like that. Okay. This is your basis of electronic configuration. Okay. Now, you need to determine maximum of electrons that the S subshell can occupy. We don't have to compute that anymore because we all, I already discussed yesterday. So, we have two electrons for the S subshell. P6 electrons. D orbital, we have 10 electrons. And then for F, we have 14 electrons. Okay. Things like that. Okay, uh, so for the purpose of remembering, so for example, if we go to the D, two electrons that the shell, the minimum shell can occupy. The two electrons, so two electrons will be occupied in the orbital, right? So again, there will be no more than two electrons that each orbital of the particular subshell can occupy. That's right. Two electrons over orbital. Like that, right? Ganon. Since then, the S orbital, so pilaman siya in, in uh, subshell, pilaman ka orbital in two. Okay, then. The D, the S, P, D, F. So, based on our memorization, because we understand that already, so one, three, five, seven. So, we have five. So, times five orbitals. Cancel the orbitals. What will be left is the 10 electrons, 2 times 5. So that's why we have 10 electrons here. Okay? So it's not really that we call it lang siya or it's a magic that we have this 2 electrons, 6 electrons, 10 electrons that it's such a can hold, then you memorize only. No, you should learn where does it came from. Okay? So that by the time you will not remember, you can derive that to a certain particular, you know, principle and concept that, oh, like that. So it will never be lost from your brain cells. So just remember this, okay, that each orbital can occupy two electrons. Okay, so that means two electrons over orbital times how many orbitals it can occupy in that particular subshell. Ganon. 
Okay? So here also, 1357 is based also in the azimuthal. Okay? You got the point? You know the point? So that's why we have 1357. Okay? Okay. We don't need to discuss this further because we understand already yesterday, right? Okay. Now we have aluminum. So 1S, note the direction. Like this. Okay? Okay. You will never go to the 3D. You will go to the 4S. Okay. Until ganon. Okay. Ganon. Uh, or you will see ganon. Do you want mga DDE ganon? We didn't say more. Shut it up. Ganon. Okay. You get the point. Ana sha. Okay. So we have one S2. Okay. Okay. S man to electrons man and S also to have S2. It will become your super scrap. So the number of electrons in each subshell will become your super scrap or your exponent in your SPDF. Because uh, you maybe you will be wondering why the two will become on the top of our as an exponent because that's the rule. The number of electrons will become your exponent, will become your superscript during your electronic configuration. Okay, so 1s2, 2s2, or next, 2p. So 2p, p, subshell can occupy six electrons, six exponent. Okay, like that. And then after 2p, 3s, oh, 3s, vale ka sa 2. Then if 3p, right? So 3p, oh, 3p, 6, okay, p, 6, man siya. And then 4s, 2, ganon. So 13, count, add all the exponents or the electrons. The exponents and the supercrypts are all electrons. Okay? Like that, so 2, 4, 10, 12. So this 12, so that means only here we cut from here. So this is 12 plus 1, so they will become... 3p1. Okay, we'll erase that for S2. Because I make it complete so that it will be AC. Okay, so 2 plus 2, 4, 6, 10, 12, plus 1, 3. So this is the arrangement. Okay, diba? Okay. Very clear. So if you need more, so 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 2p, 3p, 4s, 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 Ganon. So 3P1. So this is your electronic configuration of aluminum. Okay. Now the question was said, uh, what is the electronic configuration in terms of orbital diagram? So that's also another question. If the question was say, what is your electronic configuration of aluminum? That's the answer already. This one. But if the question was say, what is the electronic configuration in terms of orbital diagram? Okay, so the answer will be another thing. So you will say 1s. Okay, like that 1s. Okay, how many electrons can occupy for the s? Okay, in the s or orbital s, the bar 1, 3, so 1. 1 orbital. Let's say you draw a box. The box will represent your orbital. Okay, like that. So 1s2, two, 2 electrons, right? So put the two electrons, but in opposite direction. So one electron going up, one electron going down, like that. And then we go to your 2s2. Oh, the same thing, because the subshell is s, your one orbital, or put one orbital, like that, one orbital. This is 2s. How many electrons? Two, because two electrons can occupy with the s, subshell. So one, two. You need to... Uh, individual do that, individually doing that. Okay. So 2p or oh, 2p. How many orbitals in a p subshell? We have three. Oh, three couple. Oh. So one, two, three. And how many electrons it can occupy for the p subshell? We have six electrons. Okay. Now you will use the hands rule for this. Meaning, you need to completely fill up each orbital with one electron fully and then go back until it's such time it will become two electrons in each orbital. So six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons in opposite direction of your two electrons inside the orbital. Also, all are shared. 
Okay, now let's go to 3S2. So 3S, going back again to S subshell. Oh, 3S, so 1 orbital. So things like that again. Going up, going down electrons. And then the last would be your 3P. Oh, 3P. So many 3P? So P. Oh, the ang P ni mo, no? So P how many orbitals? 3. So 1, 2, 3. 3P. Okay. So 1 na malang na bilin. So 1 will go up. Then, ganan. So mo na siya. 1 will go up. So mo na yung mong orbital there yung electronic configuration for this. The Bluetooth device. Every matching does successfully. Every matching does successfully. Get the point, guys. So there's still, uh, there's still orbital that no electrons occupy because this is only three p one. Okay. Ganon siya. Any questions so far? Nothing, right? Okay. Get the point. The Bluetooth device is ready to help. Okay. So let's take a look at the ma ma situation. Uh, if it's P, o, oh, para na kayo ang P ni mo. So, makuha na ni mo ang mga azimutal, quantum number, whatever. But it's not our concern here. Our concern here is electronic configuration. Okay? That's number one. Number two. Diba? Okay. Diba ito papasa yung diagram? Uh, Kani siya kaya mo itong gamitong pero ni. Okay. Diba diba ito papasa ni 1 is 1 is 2 para dito na ka, no? Okay. May kapos sa 1 case, wait. Okay. Kakanto ka. Okay, 2s, 2, 2p, 6, 3s, 2, then 3p, something, no? 3p, 6. Okay, let's go for s2 lang muna. Okay, got the point? So, you need to memorize up to here only during your examinations, like that. Okay, and the rest will follow. Okay, then you need to ensure that there are, okay, 20, 20 maximum of 20 electrons. Then if the element are more than 20, then go directly with this. Do not, do not draw this, ha? Huh? During your memorization, do not draw this because if you take time too much like this, this one, triangle, okay? For example, uh, more than uh, 20 uh, atomic numbers, so it's very easy now, okay? You get the point? So, because it will take time. One S, two S, then kakado pa. Okay, got the point. Okay, another example we have. That's aluminum, right? Now, we go to ferrous. La uwe. Kami sa sabi ferrous uwe. Sharap. Masawa mo na ito ang ferrous rule. Char. Okay. Ferrous. Di ba? We have ferrous. Positive to an imposopheric. Positive 3. So this is iron 2, Roman numeral 2, and iron Roman numeral 3. If I will say iron oxide, that's generally iron 2, okay, chloride. Okay, but you can see directly uh, iron chloride. That's wrong because there's 2. You can see ferrous chloride, it's perfect. So, your correct grammar and chemistry grammar will be iron 2 chloride and ferrous chloride, but never iron chloride. Okay, because in chemistry, in IUPAC rule, okay, you need to carry the numeral signs. F and only F, the charge have 2, 2, 3, 1, 2. 3, 5. Then in your naming, you'll be wrong because you didn't carry the Roman numeral. But in case of uh, not science professionals, they would say, I don't know. It will be accepted because they don't know also. It's impossible also that we will educate them all the time. Okay, you get the point? That, that is not their expertise. That is not their specialization. That would mean also understandable. Okay, for us, chemistry graduates, chemical engineering graduates, or whatever. Okay, but actually that's wrong. We mean of iron chloride. Okay, it should be iron 2 chloride because we have also iron 3, the ferric and the ferrous. So if you say ferrous chloride, you mean iron 2 chloride, not iron chloride. Okay, there's no iron chloride. It could either be iron 2 chloride or iron 3 chloride or ferrous chloride or ferric chloride. You get the point? Things like that. 
For example, you have the rusting process of FeO2. Okay, Fe okay, O2, O3, and FeO, right? So, Fe2O3, so, okay, FeO3, right? And we have the oxygen here, right? So, oxygen, sorry, oxygen will transfer to Fe2, the Fe3. Uh, so, Fe2O3, and we have also FeO, like 2, because ferrous, right? Ferrous. Okay, so FeO then 2, okay, and then you don't have to put 2 because it will be cancelled, right? So 2 here, 2 here, so it will become FeO only. Okay, again, the charge of oxygen is 2, it will transfer here. The charge of if E, which is a ferrous, is 2 iron 2, it's equal to 2. So 2 minus 2, it will be cancelled neutralization reaction. Okay, so it will become neutral now as a compound. So FeO. So FeO and Fe2O3. So FeO is your iron 2 chloride or ferrous chloride. Your Fe2O3 is your ferric chloride or iron 3 chloride. And now we have Fe3O4. What is this all about? Fe3O4. Why like this? This also like this. Okay. okay. It has to do something. You will use the ozone. Okay. Ozone. O3 is the formula of your ozone layer in the sun. Okay. O3. O2 is the oxygen gas. O is the monoatomic oxygen, the stable oxygen that's, that exists as a gas. Okay, like that. So O, O2, O3. Then we have, yes, O3, this is coming from oxygen here, see? This is coming from the ozone, so 3, Fa3, O4. And then we have also 4. So where this 4 comes from? Maybe there's also, not maybe, it's for sure, see? So 2, 3, Four charges of iron, right? So, if E2O3 is what we call the magnetite, okay, because I memorized this in high school, if E3O4 is hematite, okay, things like that. So, this is very useful in different examination because sometimes they will say, what do you call, uh, which of the following is called as a hematite? And the church says, Fe2O3, Feo, Feo3, Fe3, for sure. Your answer will be Fe3O4. Which of the following is called as a magnetite? So Fe2O3, okay, like that. So sometimes the board examination is always like that, sometimes in the theory, right? And it will become very difficult somewhere along the way. And, uh, lemonade, the formula of lemonade, lemonite, calcite, okay, like that. Limestone, oh, caustic soda. Baking soda, like that. A lot, so many. And you will distinguish what types of chemical formula that is that. Then, during our classroom instruction, our teachers will not teach everything about this. You get the point? So, the only way to survive is to go to the library and read a lot about chemical formulas, what their other names and other brands for that. For example, uh, muriatic acid is also known as hydrochloric acid. Okay? Uh, we will say also as aroxinada is also called as an acetone, things like, or whatever. Oh uh, no, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, sorry. H2O2 hydrogen peroxide is the aroxinada that we will use in our, inside our uh, toilet, like that, whatever. Okay, so there's uh, the different names that they're chemical formulas. Okay, brand names, okay. Things like that. So this will not be taught every time in the classroom. Is that the point? So it should be by you. You keep on reading, reading, reading like that. Is that the point? So, and kasipiat na kay mugawa siya sa board examination. What is the another name of a lanolin? Nakakaduka. Kasi lanolin. Right? And even though you studied from first year to fifth year college, it, ne it was never taught about that. Okay, so if you are really a wide reader, then you can answer that also. Okay, just like saying, which of the following is a linoleic acid, oleic acid, olive, 
oil. What is the formula of an olive oil? What is the formula of the canola oil? So each corresponding oil has its own chemical formula. Okay, now if you are not reading a lot, you cannot answer because you, are, you know them already by the general name. That, that is an olive oil. So what if you are asked, what is the chemical formula of an olive oil? Nama. Okay, you get the point. So things like that. But you know, if you are really not a, if you are not really a science professional, it's not a concern, right? It's only our general, as long as we know that it's an oil. But for the science professional, especially if you're a chemical engineer, it's so embarrassing that you can never answer that. Get the point? So it looks like, oh my gosh, things like that. You get the point? Impression, lovely. Get the point? Things like that. Then it, it, it's also okay, it can be accepted if you are not really a licensed chemical engineer. But sometimes, once you are a graduate of chemical engineering, they have high regards only that you can easily remember the chemical formulas or the basic chemicals and substances in our planet Earth. So, but it's not true. It depends on the intellectual capability of each graduate, right? So we cannot say that in general. You got the points? It, it's still dependent on the type of a student. Okay? Things like that. So it's not a guarantee. You get the point? Things like that. Okay, now we go to our example number two. Theros. I'm saying charge. This is electronic configuration of charges now. Okay, because in our chemistry, it's, it's not being taught about charges. It's always the element only. You get the point? Things like that. So this is new. Okay, this is based on my research. Okay, so if E positive to Natanoa, Charot. Okay, so if we, have, if we have an iron, you can still remember the iron mga palangga. What is the molecular weight? Oh no, not molecular weight, atomic weight of our iron. Iron is not so, <clears throat> it's not really, shall we say, very basic. Then, you know, since you know already that uh, rusting and corrosion process, it's always every time in our nature, then as a chemical engineer in students or uh, BS chemistry students or chemistry students, then we need to memorize, right? Because this, is, this can produce acid rain, you know, okay? That can also affect our climate change our global atmosphere through the acid the rain, acidity of the rain if it turns uh, brownish or a little bit reddish in color that will drop off from our floor going to the walls and into the ground or whatever things like that okay so it's gonna be rusting process or corrosion process involves iron so basically you say ah okay i will memorize now the atomic weight of iron Things like that. So <laughs> you should remember these things because these are common. Okay? Just like water. Water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, air, ethyl alcohol, like that. So these are the substances that are very common. Salt, sugar, like that. We meet that every day in our inside our room, inside our office. Things like that. Then, this will be prioritized during our memorization. You get the point? Including also the iron. Because iron is really natural in process. You get the point? Everything will be undergoing corrosion if there's the presence of the rain and water in the reaction of the atmosphere, the rapid oxidation. Things like that. You get the point? So, that's why we need to memorize the atomic weight of iron, which is 55.85 gram per atom okay things like that okay now what is your atomic number for this it's very difficult right okay so the atomic number of iron is 26. Okay. you don't have to remember exactly huh? the atomic number of everything you the point but you can remember the first 20 elements according to the study of the metrin and the love the old periodic table. The 20 elements is very easy to memorize. One, two, three, four, five, like that. But other than that, you are not mandated to memorize. But if you love, the better. You get the point. <laughs> if, you, if you like, the better, of course. You get the point? Things like that. Okay, now we have 55, 55. We have atomic number of iron will be 
26. Okay. Now, let's apply theory here, the basic concept of elementary particles. So we have, so, uh, okay, wait, I will still remember a little bit, okay. Oh, okay, if we try to determine the electrons, we will need to say electrons plus protons is equal to the charge. Okay, that's what I remember. <laughs> Let's try to adapt if it is correct or not, okay. Then, if we have an atom, right? Atom, a single atom. Okay. You say that it is neutral, right? That consists of, okay, electron, the same number of electrons, and the same number of protons. Okay. In ions, it's not true. We're dealing with ions here. The positive two, negative two, like that. So in ions, your electrons and protons are not the same. You get the point? Things like that. That's why you need to have the formula like this. Okay? It are not the same. So that's why you have electrons, number of electrons plus number of protons is equal to your charge. Your charge could either be an ion positive or a negative or a positive ion like that. Get the point? Or negative or positive ion. Since you have positive 2 here, put the positive 2 here in the charge. Then electrons, 26, you said that iron have 26 protons, right? Okay, guys, in this case, in dealing with ions, with charges, you focus first to the number of protons. The 26 here is the number of protons, not the electrons. You need still to compute the electrons if you are dealing with charges, with charges element. If it's positive 2, if it's positive 3, could be negative 1, like that. But if it is no charge, meaning neutral comp neutral element, okay, then you treat your proton equal to your electron. You get the point? But during the charges, you prioritize first the proton because the proton really signifies, okay, for one element, okay? You got the For example, if I will deal with isotopes, or different element. You can still remember isotopes. So isotopes says uh, elements that have the same number of protons. Okay? Or atomic number, but differs in their mass number. So it mentioned first the proton, right? Not the electron. Because for the natural reason, uh, because electrons have negative. So we will deal with protons first. That's why makada auxiliary sa ions he will win here in the study of ions that prioritize first the proton not the electron we still have to compute the number of electrons in terms of element with charges you get the point so electron oh, so electron number of electrons plus 26 protons is equal to 2 then electrons math linear algebraic expression okay E is equal to 2 minus 26. 26 will become negative. It will be transposed to the right basic math. Okay, 2 minus 26. So electron is equal to negative 24. See, it is true. I have a negative answer. Meaning, negative ang electron. Okay, you get the point. Now, if you try to use that in our electronic configuration, we are not concentrated as I said a while ago. We are not focusing to the negative side. We will deal with electrons without magnitude or without the sign, or without direction, because negative would imply direction. Negative meaning down, negative meaning left, in our math again. Okay, you get the point? Things like in a quadrant in algebra, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, like that x and y axis, then one. Okay, so we have like that, so 24 electrons. Ang ato ito si Reni yung higay You get the point? 24 electrons. So, mag electronic configuration na yung ta chart. Okay, that's the point. So, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Lagi papas na naman ako guys. Uy, so, it's still 20 pa ba ya? 24 ba siya? So, we still have lacking of 4 electrons chart. So, magdubing na po ta ato. Okay. 1s2, s3, s4, s2, 2p, 3p, okay, 4p, then 3, 3d, 4d, then 4f, 
Okay? Now, Chris, as you can see here, in your 1S, in your first energy level, it contains only 1. In your second energy level, it contains only 2, the S and the P subshell. In your third energy level, it contains 3, okay, the S and the P and the D subshell. In your fourth energy level, it contains of the 4, so S, P, D, and F. That's why, in the poly exclusion principle, it states that no two electrons in an element, okay, that could have precisely the same set of four quantum numbers, things like that. Because here, only in the, in the four energy level, the other one don't have four, right? So, things like that. So, only in the energy level four, that the four set are present. Okay? Things like that. You get the point? Ganon. So, with four S, we're going to go to the other Okay, Anna. Tang, Okay, the other one. Tang, Tang. So, one S to correct, two S to two P correct, three S to correct, three P six. They are three P six for S to the yon. Three D they are sharp. Ganon. Diba? Okay. Diba? As you can see in the, the one, oh, there's no perfect subshell. Two, there's no perfect subshell. Three, there's no perfect subshell. So the, the four subshells will not be present every time. That's what it means by poly exclusion principles. Like that, you get the point? So, uh, 20 na na siya na ang So, 2, 18, 16, 18, 20. So we have 24, so we have still four here. Ganon! Okay, this is for the iron, right? So this is 24 charis. Okay? Ganon siya ang mahitabo ni Ining Higayuna. 24 siya. Okay? So, saan yung mahatod ni Ikaw Maniwan? Makuha na yung 24. Okay. So, mag-roll ito yung electron diagram ni Ini. Okay? Now, since you are not concerned that much in this stable one, S2, 2, S2, 2, P6, the S2, 3, P6. So, we'll focus on the 4, S2. Let's focus on the 4, S2, 3, P4. Okay, why you must focus that one? Because it's in here that it's top. Because supposedly, the D orbital would have 10 electrons and we have only 4. So, we'll focus here. And if the situation goes wrong, we need to get the electrons from the 4, S here. Alam na ito siya dito. Okay, you got the point, things like that. So, ano siya sa yang tupad? You got the point next to him. Okay, you got the point. So, it's just normal also. Like, as we will go and borrow money from our friend. It's impossible that we will borrow money in which we don't know them. It's also like that. So, the most nearest to the 3D is 4S. It's impossible you will borrow electrons from 2P. It's very far. They are not close with each other. So, the same also like a person, right? So, so that we can answer, we can, we can really understand by having an analogy, okay, that the point, things like that. So, D orbitals, so SP is PD, so we have five orbitals. So, one, two, three, four, five, come on. Okay, now we have four electrons. Oh. One, two, three, four, oh my gosh. There's still black orbital here. It looks like 3D is very unhappy because there's still empty orbital in him. Okay? So, he plans to get the electrons of 4S2. Okay. Now, 4S2, so there's two electrons and we need also the S. So, S, how many orbital in S? So, you have uh, two uh, orbital S, P, D, F. So, S, we have one orbital. So, one. So, possibly with two electrons with negative signs. So, that's the reason why. Okay? Now, since we have here D and S, and we go to the atomic energy level with the highest, so four. Right? So, up to sh he will borrowing the energy level with the highest, which is 4, not the 3, 2, 3, 4. Aside from knowing that factor, they, they are close to each other. There's also another reason because the energy level is 4, higher. Okay, get the point. So what will happen to their electrons here? What will happen for this? 
So these two electrons will jump here, okay, with this last orbital with the 3D4. They are jumping there, like so that it will become happy, like that, and then the other one will go here in the opposite direction here. Okay. Now, so your 4S2 here will become 4S0 because your two electrons here are bound by the 3D4. So, since S to the 0 is non-existent in electronic configuration, then if you apply also math, say 2 raised to the power 0, 3 to the power 0 will always be equal to 1. Right? Math. 1,000 raised to the power 0 will be equal to 1. Any numbers raised to the power 0 will always be equal in math. Right? Now, here, S to the 0. S is not a number. Right? It's a variable. It's a letter. So it's impossible also you will say 1 for this. Okay? So we can automatically cross out this 4S2 already. Eliminate that 1. Like that. So your electronic configuration of uh, ferros without 4S. Because the electrons are barred by the 3D. And it's useless for him to exist without the electrons. Okay, it will be meaningless for him. So that's why he will be eliminated. So our the third configuration of ferros is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d4 directly. But you have to count. So 1, 2, 3, 4. You add a 2, 3d6, Nalisha, guys. Okay. Okay, 3d6. You can easily correct also because when you add still 4, then you still have 2. Then you have to add 2. Because you have, you said 24, right? So things like so. Meaning if you review closely your answer, you have the correct answer. If you don't review, then you might be wrong. Like this, and very fast, like that, and opted to not to remember, things like that. If you double check, double check, double check, then you can correct, right? But, but in an examination, sometimes it's time frame. Sometimes you cannot review, right? So there's a chance you will be in error talaga siya. Okay, but the point, things like that. So, more than like the configuration of ferros. Okay. Now, mag-orbital, orbital na yun ta. Okay, but the point, so it is correct, it's true. Let's use the electronic configuration by orbital diagram. Okay, things like that. So, orbital diagram. Okay, so, 1s, 2s, 2p, 2s, 3p, 3d. So, no need guys, because your d is, na, show naman akong orbital. And 1s, 2s, 2p is very easy, just like before. No need to You get the point? So you get the point, so it's gonna be like that. Okay, now, what if we will say, uh, write the electronic configuration in terms of noble gas notation? So there's also another uh, it, uh, uh, question. There are three questions, because you guys, if the question was say, write the electronic configuration of aluminum, period. Another version also, write the electronic configuration in terms of orbital diagram. Okay, so we're doing that. Three, write the electronic configuration in terms of the noble gas notation. So this is, I will, I will try to discuss. Okay, so that's why also when you buy the periodic table in the market, they use the noble gas notation. Kapantay mo in each element, if you're observant in your first year college in your high school. They don't write the total electronic configuration the first version I told it to you. Okay, told to you. They will always use the noble gas notation. So that's the purpose of this. The noble gas. Oh, noble gas. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. So these are all noble gases in group zero. In our periodic table, they are also called inert gases. Okay, this inert gases and noble gases can save your electronic configuration from writing too much. Okay, you got the point. So just memorize in your brain cells that the last will be from 4s2 and it has 20 already. So 20 already, right? So which among these noble gases are closer to 20? So neon, four helium is four. Neon is 10. So I think argon is 18. Okay, based on my memorization. I don't think so. The others, I forgot. <laughs> you get the point? So it's gonna be a closer genia is an argon. Okay, you get the point? 
Argon. So you will say, a close and open parenthesis argon. So this is also 18, and you stuck by 20. You still use the uh, S. So 4 S 2. Because argon is 18 plus 2 electrons, then 20. You stop because it's 20. Then 3 D 6. That's This is what you see every time in your periodic table. Not the complete like that. <laughs> now it's been answered 30 years already. Because when I was in high school, I cannot understand where this argon coming from. I don't have time also to research at that age. I am very young at that time. I'm not interested because I'm, I'm still in the chemistry. I don't know what course I'll be able to take. Things like that because I, want, I wanted to become a broadcast journalist. Mass comm major in broadcasting. Things like that. I'm not aiming to become an engineer at that time. So it's not on my mind really to research more. Why it become argon? Like what I have already chemistry. Admittedly. Like that. Things like that. Okay? So, oh my gosh, like that, and it just has passed by. When I go to college, I did not also research why there's like this, like this, argon. Maybe it's being taught, but I'm just sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> you got the point? But, but I could not remember really that our teacher taught us about electronic configuration, noble gases. Okay, anybody can share that your teacher now taught you about this noble gases notation of electronic configuration? Uh, answer me honestly in your lecture one and lecture two in chemistry. I think some and I think also others not also, right? It depends on the teachers. Okay? Now, so 3D6. One of the atong electronic configuration based on noble gases notation. Okay. Right? So there are three versions how to ask in particular topic. Ha? Okay. Got one. Okay. Okay, mano na siya ang ferros, charis. Okay. Now, example number three. Punan ba dito itong mga example, no? Okay, and now we go to the chloride. Again, ayong stop. Because the element, neutral element is very easy. Okay, we go to the chloride. Negative one. Chloride or chlorine, which has an atomic weight of 35.45. Gram per atom. Okay? Things like that. All right. Chlorine also is very important. And you have to memorize this. It's present in our salts during cooking. Okay? It's present also in our, inside our body to produce hydrochloric acid as our digestive acid during metabolism and digestion. And it's also serve also to produce the electrical impulses in our neurons, in our central nervous system, to produce the desired hormones. Okay, things like that. and this is how chlorides and chlorine very important in our body. Okay, aside from the outside sources, which is like plants and animals, like that, but inside our body only. Okay, for the purpose of discussion, like that. Okay, so chloride, chloride negative. No, okay, what is the electronic configuration of chloride? But to tell you honestly, it's very strange to ask like this. It was normally element talaga siya. But for the purpose siguro na in the examination, uh, expect the unexpected. Okay, that's why. Okay, that's the point. So we start with the chlorine. Okay, chlorine. Chlorine is the second, no. Chlorine is the second most electronegative in the periodic table out of 118 elements. The most electronegative is the fluorine. Okay, it's in the top. Okay, things like the chlorine. Okay, if the question also in the future is it, what is the second most electronegative element in the periodic table? Your answer would be chlorine. No other. Okay, things like that. Okay, now chlorine, 17, right? Okay, 17 atomic number. Okay, then our atomic weight is. 35.45 Okay, like that Okay, now what is our electronic configuration? Let's compute first the number of electrons Okay, number of electrons plus number of protons is equals to the charge So we have the charge of negative 1 to arrive Number of electrons unknown Number of protons present which is 17 
that represents the atomic number, 17, like that, because this is ions, so it's very important, because this is not an element that the number of electrons and protons are equal. Okay, so electrons is equal to negative 1 minus 17, so your electrons will be negative 18, meaning to say, it is 18 electrons. Drop out the sign, because we are concentrating with the quantities, how many electrons. We are not focusing on the direction, magnitude, or whatever. Okay, so we drop off the negative. Okay, so 18 electrons. Or we can put 18 with negative sign at the top of 18. That would mean electrons. Or we can say so 18, small letter E at the top, underline small. That's also 18 electrons. Okay? So it's up to you how to manage as long as you understand what it means. Okay? Get the point? Things like that. So 18 electrons overall. Ganon. Now, I couldn't really pass any configuration. Eh? Ay, nako. Magbotas na tagay. 1S. Ito po yun na si Junjo sa atong electronic configuration. Okay? Ay, nako. So, 1S. Okay? 2S. 3S. 4S, the SPDF, right? So, 2, okay, P, 3, P, 4, P. Then, 3, D, 4, D. Then, 4, F. Okay, meron siya. No? So, so, better in muras na gudun yung upat daan, kung sige na lang. Okay? Okay, uman ako makuanda yun. Char. Okay? So, anaw na to siya, no? So, don't worry because we have still the pineapple bread for our snacks with tea because it's very good to after the vlog, right? Okay, so we have here 1S2. Okay, check. 2S2, check. 2P, check. Okay, 3S, check. No, P2 is 6. See, it's very easy to correct, right? 3S2. Like, turn, turn. Okay, turn, turn. Oh, 3P. 3P6 and 4S2. And we said 18. Let's count the electrons here. 2 plus 2 plus 6, 10, 12, 18. So we drop off the 4S because it's already 18. So it's here. So this is your electronic configuration. Perfect. Okay, if it is really perfect, guys, following the rules of our electronic configuration, you may, you, we will say that our electronic configuration is in the ground state. Now, if it is not following the standard electronic configuration, like it's being a barrel of the electrons, just like before, right? The ferros, that is in its excited state. Okay, so two states, ground state and excited state. So remember, you have the shell energy level in each atom, then it will jump there. So that your electrons at that time, it will become excited state. Very obvious, when you are excited, you mean you are moving, or either whatever. So this is very, very simple to understand, right? Okay, so our electronic configuration will be like this. Okay, or you will say also that it contains no unpaired, but let's check because not all the time, Raba. But be sure to follow your shining rules. That's our ground state. Okay, meaning it's not moving, it's not barrowed, it's not barrowing. Okay, because ground. When you're in the ground, meaning you are not moving. Okay, grounded. Things like that. You get the point? Okay. Now, we understand here by knowing also the fact the paramagnetic and the diamagnetic. That's why guys, in electronics industry, we can easily extract what particular element decide to make this particular product because they can determine really the paramagnetic materials, the diamagnetic materials, it can easily conduct electricity or conductive to whatever because they study the electronic configuration. Imagine from 14th century, 15th century, 16th century up to 19th century, then it's just in a millennium or millennial stage that they discovered that lithium is the best battery. 
So why they will not first come think of lithium in the first place? Meaning it's constant study of the behavior of the element. Okay? And they noted that out that uh, lithium have a very long life. That's why they changed the other type of the battery before. So that's because they're studying the electronic configuration of each element. Because this is the time we understand their physical and chemical properties, how they behave, how they will last, how they will die, uh, certain uh, temperature or pressure like that and everything, right? So maybe after five years also, another element will be discovered. We will replace lithium by selenium. We don't know. We're still in the process of continuous research. Our research is not dying, okay? Continuous research has been done. So we don't know. We, we need to change our battery type into another element also. You get the point? So that's possible. Okay, so things like this. This is the FIDA of studying the electronic configuration. Okay, things like the electronics industry, semiconductors industry. Things like that. You get the point? It has to do something with electronics. You get the point? The laptop, the mobile phones, the gadgets. Our scientists and manufacturers are basing on this chemistry of their process. You get the point? Oh, uh, I should have a book. So, paramagnetic. Okay, things. What do you mean by paramagnetic? Uh, okay, so this have unpaired electrons. Contains unpaired electrons. Okay, if there's unpaired, unpaired electrons, then it is adaptive to or attracted to the magnetic field. External source of magnetic field. Okay, so they can identify, oh, this one is really mm, have the process of magnetism. So it's very easy to them to adjust what kind of, uh, you know, elements they will uh, manufacture. Okay, so paramagnetic. Now they are magnetic. Oh, contains no unpaired electrons. So meaning to say all electrons are shared. Just like this, chlorides, all are shared completely, there's no excess. Okay, so many to say this is really weak. Okay, weak to attract the magnetic field. Okay, things like that. You get the point? So we, we cannot adjust the paramagnetism, the magnetism of the materials. It will also be helpful in the production of the desired yield of the products. Okay, through this. Okay, get the point? So, by this, also, we can attach also with the topic of covalent bonding, right? So, if it is nonpolar, because uh, all are shapes, if most of the nonpolar, for example, alcohol, like that, uh, hydrocarbons, are diamagnetic substances. So, it will never attract to, you know, the magnetic field sources. You say, you know, Contains no unpaired electrons. So no contain no, no unpaired electrons meaning all are shared. Okay. Now paramagnetism here, paramagnetic. So uh, this unpaired electrons. Example for this is water. So that's why water is conductive. You get the point? Because of paramagnetic paramagnetic principle. Things like that. Okay? That is in terms of magnetism. Okay, so this will be about physics na talaga, no? Here, paramagnetic and diamagnetic. You got the point? Ganon siya. Now, guys, if this chlorine, we need to determine how many shared electrons. We can compute this also by not doing the, you know, the uh, Lewis dot structures. How can we do that? Okay, so we will say, okay, the total number of shared electrons Okay, will become your total number of protons. Okay, protons minus the unshared electrons. Okay, so you can get the total number of shared electrons because it is equal to the total number of protons minus the unshared electrons. You got the points in here for the chlorides, we have 17. In the chlorine, so 17 minus unshared. Na baka yung shared yung ari? Wala. So, zero. 
So you mean to say, your total number of electrons will also be 17, in which jive and match to our theory. So 17 and young uh, electrons. Because chlorine here is chlorine, not chloride. Okay? So chlorine, not chloride. Because chloride, the number of protons and number of electrons are not equal. But by theory, if it is a chlorine as an element, so during the calculation, it's also matching, right? Total number of electrons is equal to the total number of protons minus the unshared electrons because in our electronic configuration, there's no shared electrons. Okay, so 17 minus 0. So 17. So 17 is also the number of protons of the chlorine or the atomic number of the chlorine, which is also the number of electrons of chlorine because chlorine here is neutral. You get the point? Things like that. So all monoatomic masses are neutral. There's no charge. Okay, so oxygen gas, there's no charge. You get the point? Ganon. Okay, so O3, ozone. Did you have O4? Sorry. Do you have O4 or not? So, for example, we have uh, C, C, uh, C, C, L4. This is carbon tetrachloride. Okay. So, wait. So, I, I will say C, O, 4. Wait, this has C, O, 4. Carbon like this. Okay. Because we have also, right, carbon tetroxide. This like that. Okay. Correct if I'm wrong, guys. Because what I understand really is the peroxide, okay, peroxide, okay, H2O2, okay, things like that, so, 2, 2, like that, see, okay, so, mention it about 2, 2, and then the peroxide, because 2, 2, O2, negative 2, then transfer there, that's why H2O2, okay, oxygen gas, of that is peroxide. So the charge will be negative 2, but there's subscript 2. That's it. Transfer of hydrogen, may mo siyang H2O2. That's the point. Ganon. Okay. And then, now sa the tetroxide, yung tetroxide, pentoxide. Like that, di ba? So naman, O2, O3, O4, O5. Uh, okay, but I don't see O6, O7, O8, O10. Huy! Muna ko tuyo ha, O10. Okay, start with O2, O3, O4. But what I really understand most of the times, up to 5 only. So, oxygen gas, okay, that is ozone, then 4, O4 will be tetroxide, 5 will be pentoxide. I don't really meet uh, hexo, hexocide or heptocide. Okay? So it's only stop up to 5 based on what I've uh, learned. Okay? Oxygen gas. Okay? Actually, this is also ox, uh, dioxide. Okay? Dioxide. O3, uh, dioxide or oxygen gas. Here, O3, ozone or trioxide. Okay. Here, O4 is, this is tetroxide really, from the word tetra means 4. So, tetroxide. Here, 5 from the word penta, meaning 5. So, pentoxide. But beyond that, I'll never encounter from O6 to O10. O10. You got the point? <laughs> really? Okay. Things I have also in 205, right? N205, it is dinitrogen pentoxide. Okay, this is the usual example of our chemical equilibrium. Uh, you know, the number of moles after like this. Okay, it will become like that, minus X with the reaction like that. So, in 205 is the usual uh, example, right? In 205, na anong tao? So, 5, the way na um. Okay? So, nabutaan yung tetroxide, sure, kung naging taan na. Sa, ang O3, sa much? That's ozone. So, what, I never encountered O6 to O10. Okay. So, what do you think, guys? Have or not? 
Okay? So I'm just maximizing the existence of oxygen. Okay? So because most of us know only that oxygen will exist as an O2. Okay, but beyond that, it will also exist until O5, pentoxide. Okay? Things like that. But it depends on the partner. Okay? Partner. Uh, partner element. Ganoan. So any questions so far for this? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like it. Bye bye. God bless everybody. Remember that Jesus love us. See you in my next vlog. I will be happy if you will be able to subscribe to the channel. This is again your YouTube content creator. Bye bye. Science, health, safety, and music, and others. Hello, Babush. Chai. Diba? Nakakaloka.